between understanding a concept and understanding what it's called. So every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I know that's a thing. I you don't remember start. which thought. Oh, it's the third one. Okay. So, I, but I could have survived. I, like it could have made it through the rest of my life without knowing that it's precisely the third law. You know, so maybe, maybe in some field of study it's like, well, it's very important that it's the third law, not the first, not the second, but the third. Uh, here it's the same idea. Rolle's theorem, <laughs> given an interval, A to B, if f of a and f of b are equal to one another, then there's a location on the interval where the first where the first derivative is equal to zero, right? So I think intuitively you probably already understood that, right? Assuming that you can kind of parse the language because it's, it's again intentionally weird the way they do it. But that what they're saying is you have a, an interval from a to b. And they're telling you that the value, I'll, I'll even go open circle because they, they left it with parentheses, so I'll do that. Here to here, they have the same height, all right, at the endpoints, or at least I, I attempted to draw it in such a way that they have the same height. If it's a continuous function, is there any way that I could draw a curve going from the beginning to the end in such a way that the that, that there wouldn't be a slope of zero in there at least once. So I could do it like this, I can maybe go down like this. You had a possibility of maybe do a little wiggle up here. I, I can I can draw infinitely many pathways going from the start to the end. Somewhere in that journey the slope has to be equal to zero. Just because physically that's the only way it would play out. And this is the, the only reason I own this string. Oh, because it has to turn back down. Because it has to, it has to start and end at the same place. So you could either go straight line, horizontal slope, or you can have like a little belly in it, in which case down, I, I don't have a third hand, so right here <laughs> is where the slope would be equal to zero. Or you could, and I can't reverse gravity either, so <laughs> up there somewhere. The, gra the, um, the slope would be equal to zero. But that, that's generally the idea, is that no matter how you draw it, if you're drawing it with a continuous function, there's no way you can get from beginning to end without having a zero slope in there somewhere. All right. Um, <laughs> and just bear in mind, it's got, the, it's got the word theorem in it. So a proven theory. <laughs> the MVT, the mean value theorem. This one. I think you get a 100 for your life. Like if you if you're able to disprove a fundamental theorem. Well, it's not the fundamental theorem of calculus, but a fundamental theorem uh, associated with calculus. Then. Um, you're pretty sad. Then yeah, you're. It's not that I think that I can. It's just that you were just so confident in like saying that. It that you got it. You just got to. Yeah, like, you gotta go for it now. Try, yeah, try. yeah. No, I, I understand that. And I respect that. So yeah, by all means, figure out a, an exception to it. But again, assume continuous and differentiable. So if you if you come up with a case and you find out after the fact that oh wait it's there's a discontinuity there that's why that's why I played out then all bets are off. Uh, mean value theorem <coughs> on the closed interval A to B you have the uh, instantaneous rate of change being equal to the average rate of change. We've actually worked with this already a long time ago and repeatedly since then. The idea that you could find the derivative and set it equal to the average rate at some point for a function on a closed interval. But really what that's saying is that at some point the average and instantaneous rate of change would have to be the same. Right? And my analogy, the real life analogy for that would be you're driving in a car, you're going from, you know, you're commuting to work or something, uh, or school in this case, or, or work too. You know, so you do simple velocity, distance over time, simple speed anyway. And so you come up with 60 miles an hour. What the mean value theorem is telling you is that at at least a single moment in your trip, you had to have been traveling at 60 miles an hour. Doesn't mean you were traveling at it the whole the whole time through, but it had to have happened at least one moment, right? So maybe most of the time you're going 30 miles an hour, 
Maybe uh, some of the times you're going 70 miles an hour, right? You, you did some 50 miles an hour in there, but at some point, even if you went from 30 to 70, at some point you had to pass through 60 to get there. And, and even if it's for a, like a half a heartbeat, it still happens, all right? That's what, the, um, that's what the mean value theorem is telling us. Now graphically, a little visual representation here on A to B. Let's see. I can't remember. Is this is this the one that doesn't have the ruler, or does it have the ruler? Oh, it's the other app that has the ruler. Damn it. All right. Well, anyway. Let me just draw a straight line a second. From uh, get that going. Select the right tool. Some would say I'm always going to select the right tool. All right. So, and I'll just kind of highlight it in black, I guess. That, no, that's not going to work. Undo. Undo. This video is not getting a lot of likes. All right. That's as close as I could do. All right, what this would be, this black line here, would be the average slope. All right. That average slope represents the average rate of change. What the mean value theorem is telling us is that at least a single moment along the curve, there must be an instance in which the instantaneous slope is the same as that. So all you'd have to do to justify it, at least in your own mind, would be to take a ruler, put it on your average slope, and which is just a, a line segment connecting the beginning to the end, and just slide it along your curve, all right? So same slope, and see if there's a tangent that has that same slope. Happens, looks like twice, all right? I can draw two instances, all right? I could draw two instances where the average and instantaneous slopes would be the same. Uh, or at least I can, in my mind, do that. Kinda. Oh, hello. That's the attempt, anyway. That's the best I can do. All right, so that's the visual. So what we need to do is work on the application of the practical. And so, it's a little things in there. If you're allowed to use a, a calculator, then your average rate program is going to come in handy. But if you're not, then it's, it'll actually be just terrible knowledge, is knowing that your calculator has a program that it would do all the work for you, but you're not allowed to use it. So that that that's well, that's just terrible. Yeah, we don't want that. All right, so uh, Rolle's theorem, all right? <clears throat> so that's telling us that if it's a continuous differentiable function on a close or on an interval, that there must be an instance in which the derivative is equal to zero at some point along the curve, all right? So we could verify that. Uh, it's polynomial. Therefore, well, not therefore, but it's continuous and differentiable. So I can do a quick f prime and get negative 2x plus 3. Set it equal to 0. And you get x equals, what, 3 halves? All right, so. I mentioned this a while ago, and I, I, I'll say it in like every variation of a calculus class that I teach. If you're ever in doubt, take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. Odds are that's the right way to do it. You know, there's a handful of approaches that we'll do that don't involve something along those lines when taking the derivative, but almost, I, mean, I don't want to say almost all, but the overwhelming majority of them involve doing something like that. So if you're ever in a jam, like, oh, I don't remember what Rolle's theorem is. Well. 
Let me take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. Odds are that's probably going to be part of the process. All right. So here we've justified it, and we're good. So now if we ended up with a case where... Oh, sorry. The one thing that, um, that I didn't justify, I got... I was pontificating, so I got a little off here, is I, I do need to verify that the endpoints have the same height. So those are the conditions. So continuous differentiable, endpoints have the same height. Otherwise, my string analogy doesn't really work, right? Because if the endpoints do not have the same height, so one's higher than the other, there are, there are many ways I can get from beginning to end without having a zero slope along the way. Here's an example of one, just one with a negative slope. All right, so that condition is in place. So let's hop down to number three, take a look at a mean value theorem question, which is, I think it's a little bit, well, it depends on the situation. If you're allowed a calculator, it's much easier. If you're not, then it takes a little bit more work, but it's not conceptual work that's difficult. It's just actually doing it. All right. Uh, it's polynomial, so it's continuous and differentiable. Same deal as before. I need the average rate. All right. So that's going to be f of 5 minus f of 1 over 5 minus 1. So change of y over change in x. So that's going to be 25, 24, so 6. So 25 minus 1 over 4. You can figure out the y values and plug it in any way you want. That's just the, the standard formula, the f of b minus f of a. This, this guy right here. All right. So continuous differentiable, I have an average rate. I want to see if that's the same as my derivative. All right, so I'm going to figure out y prime. Not much to do there. It's like the definition. When we were first learning about the power rule, that's, I think, our first example. So we're good there. All right, so now what the mean value theorem is telling us is that there must be an instance where our instantaneous and average rates are the same. So I can set 2x equal to 6 and see when that happens. All right, so x would be equal to 3. All right, so the directions, I mean, is, I, I kind of got a little fast and loose with this. Determine if the mean value theorem applied. I didn't really say yes, I just did it. The fact that I did it, I think, implies that it's a yes. Um, but yeah, on the exam you should say yes, it applies because it is continuous and differentiable function on the closed interval. Uh, but yeah, so you would want to look for situations like, for example, in number six, where maybe it's not continuous and differentiable on an interval, All right? So cosine of x is everywhere continuous, so that's fine, that's not a problem. But the tangent function is undefined whenever cosine is equal to zero. So we did this something like this a little earlier. That's pi over two plus pi k, where k belongs to the set of integers. All right, and so in this case, f of x undefined squeaky pen at pi over 2 because pi over 2 where in that last problem it didn't fall in the interval of I think it was negative pi over 6 to pi over 3 now it does fall in the interval of 0 to pi so we have a vertical asymptote so an infinite discontinuity right smack dab in the middle of this interval which is going to cause us to exclude the mean value theorem as a possibility. So MVT fails.
Okay, well anyway, so that that's pretty much that. I was gonna do the first and second derivative test, but honestly I forgot this lesson was in the packet. So so today was rule's theorem and mean value theorem. So, <laughs> so there you go. If you're waiting with bated breath to learn about the first and second derivative test, well, come on. Um, well, at least the first derivative test anyway. So uh, for practice, at least, well, we've got like 12, 13 minutes, something like that. Um, you can tackle the problems on this page. Your homework is the textbook assignment. Anyway, so it's not the, it sounds like it's a lot. 